Hello and welcome. The last Friday before common riding is usually the coordinates night at the Langham Social Club. This year it'll be different, but what we've managed to do, thanks to Langham Live, is we can bring you the 2017 coordinates night held in the Social Club. So grab a drink, get ready to sing along, tap your toes and enjoy yourself and hopefully we'll be back at the Social Club for a proper coordinates night next year. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a resounding Lanham Social Club welcome to Cornet Stuart Murray and right and left hand men Tweddle and Fletcher. Has been. 
I fear the night, slightly near weather beaten, but still a passionate supporter of all things pertaining to long and common riding. We all hope that come next Friday, Stephen, you and Avril will relive the glory that was yours 25 years ago. You can clap. <laughs> We're delighted to have the Cormac of 50 years ago, Colin Barnfather, in our midst tonight. Colin Tay has been a great servant of the common riding. Not only that, he was also one you of know, the founding fathers of the Lanham Young Riders Club, which has already paid great dividends by teaching many bairns, including our Cormac and left hand man, to ride. Colin, we hope that Sheila and you have a truly magical day on Friday, because you certainly deserve it. It would be unforgivable of me not to mention the Diamond Jubilee Cornet, Stuart's grandfather, ex Cornet Ian Murray. Had he been alive today, he would have been immensely proud of Stuart and all that he has achieved. He would also have been bursting with pride to stand at his grandson's side as his Diamond Jubilee Cornet. On Friday, Ian, Rita and Tom will be looking, looking down on Stuart from the front row of the heavenly gallery, we have tear in their eyes and a song in their hearts, and will and we'll be with you every step of the way. <laughs> they say that the down eye seeks the do it, for it's at this time of the year that the exiles come here to look yet smear into sympathetic eyes and hear again the music of their mother tongue. We are delighted to welcome back into the fold Shirley Scott, Nee Scott from West Coast Farms, Ta'a <laughs> Ta Toa Road, Tea Widdy, New Zealand. <laughs> if you think that's bad, wait till you hear the next one. <laughs> Gail Murray, <laughs> Long Fair, Hogue, oh, Gail, come up here a minute. <laughs> Long Fair, Hogue, Gail, Murray, friend. Slan by a pop wing if go get for drop or slant to see the old bug of That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> All 58 letters of each. <laughs> Maisie Elwood from Baltimore, Maryland, the US of A. Westwich, Nee Barber from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> and lastly, and certainly not leastly, <laughs> the Exorcist. <laughs> because if you invite him into your pussy, sure to get rid of all your spirits. <laughs> Platinum Jubilee this year. To you all, we extend the warm hand of friendship and say quite simply, welcome you. On the Tuesday before the common riding in 1949, Cornet Jim Robinson and his right and left hand men, ex Cornets Morrison and Morrison, that's Edgar Nekimo, were invited to a smoker held in the Royal British Legion Club rooms. That was the first ever Cornets night to be held here. 68 years later, this event has grown into one of the highlights in the annual build-up to Langham's great day. 
Not only that, but for many years now, this building has become the home of another great common riding institution, the Barnatesti. Not to mention a must visit location and common riding day for thousands of Druthi bandsmen and fit soldiers. <laughs> you will all know that the Lanham Social Club is currently in a protracted legal battle with the Royal British Legion over the ownership of this building. The terrible spectre that this could be the very last Cornet's Night is now hanging over us. But this is Lanham, and the Social Club Committee will fight this battle to the nail. They have a very good legal team, but the best solicitors don't come cheap. So if you feel you'd like to help and make a donation to the Fighting Fund, there is a box on the wall across there by the door. Any amount, however small, will be most gratefully received. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, they say that the common riding is a roller coaster ride of many conflicting emotions. That the moments of sheer joy and exhilaration are also tinged with sadness as we remember folk that are gone. Since we last met, a number of regular attenders at this event, or folk that have played a key role in the common riding, have passed away. Can I ask you to raise a glass and toast absent friends? If he came the night expecting the Royal Variety performance, he'll be disappointed. Because he'll be getting any variety here. As I've said so often in the past, with mind-numbing regularity, when it comes to musicians, it's the same old faces singing the same old songs. But what faces? And what songs? He can't improve in perfection, so why try? But before we start proper, I'm afraid I'm going to have to comply with current safety legislation and talk you through what to do in the event of an emergency. Can I ask you to switch off all mobile phones? And if there's anybody here for Armstrong Court, could you please deactivate your electronic tagging device? <laughs> <laughs> if at any point in the proceedings, Eddie Fisher rushes up from behind the bar and shouts, Brace! Brace! Please remove your false teeth and adopt the crash position you keep between your legs. Should there be a power cut, low-level lighting will guide you to the bar. The Langham Social Club has adopted a zero-smoking policy. Smoke detectors have been fitted in here and in the lobbies for your safety. Do not throw your fag ends into the urinals or bowls, as this makes them soggy and hard to relight. <laughs> In the lowest seat, you'll find a small torch and a whistle to attract the attention of the workers. For the best, the British are not. <laughs> Seriously, folk, when folk are up singing or speaking, it's strictly table service only. All you need to do is stick up your hand, and the bar staff will totally ignore you. <laughs> is the minister in the room? No. no. We'll first sing this <laughs> for that real known uh, husband and wife duo, Charlie and Vi. It's great that Charlie could make it tonight because he's not been at all well lately. Last Tuesday, he was rushed into the Cumberland Infirmary for an emergency hole in the heart operation, but was later released when the Fanapola Minton's pajama popped <laughs> During his time in the hospital, I was touch and go. The doctor said that if Charlie touched the nurses again, he would have to go. <laughs> I made a debut at the Cornets night last year, adding a touch of feminine charm to an otherwise butch lineup of entertainers. She comes from a very musical family in Lanham, but even the sewing machine was a singer. That was the one I was first for The next is going to open the proceedings with the song that captivated us all last year. That great common writing air, Annie Laurie. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a rousing welcome to Mrs. Bye Graham. Tonight we have Mr. Henry Jeffrey, another of that succeeding generation that is destined to take the mantle on in years to come. Henry comes from another family that is positively drenched in common writing lore. 
a cousin twice removed to the cornet's feather, there are few musical events at this time of the year that Henry's no involved in. The flute barn, the common reading concert, the banner testing, kept on common reading Sunday, and this night all have benefited immensely from his great musical skill. Henry, it's a great pleasure to have you back here tonight. <laughs>
since the time when Aunt Christie was a boy and the Dead Sea was only seriously ill. As a lifelong friend, we've laughed together, we've grept together, we've drunk the bottle dry together on many, many occasions. As Bairns or Happy Hunting Run was Carline Street and the Bark Lane doing for Johnny Young's and the Dump, which was always a great source of fascinating things for us young boys, like the occasional artificial leg. <laughs> Kenneth, my brother David, is heavily involved in many aspects of the common riding. For many years, he's been a stalwart of the Castle Craigs Club. He's tooted his flute in the float band for 47 years now, and is in with our gallant company, we carry the Lanham Shovel and Common Writing Day. And our Gordon Bobbles Reads expert, tutelage. <laughs> which is a tremendous grand word for the social club at 20 past 8 on a Friday night. But it's as, a, it's as a, a chairman and speaker that he really comes to the fore. For his chair, we are that he cares to remember and is always in demand as a speaker at rugby dinners, fun suppers and particularly common writing functions. Kenneth has got two things up and common writing chairman Roger. Well, Roger took an early bath while crossing the views and common writing day in the time. Kenneth was out of the air five times last year while crossing the same stretch of water. But it takes more than a good soaking to keep a good man down. Ladies and gentlemen, propose the toast to the common writing, Mr. Kenneth Poe. Chairman, Conrad Stewart, right and left, Conrad's family, ladies and gentlemen. And I start by saying it's a great pleasure to have been asked here tonight to speak at this year's Social Club Conrad's Night. Thanks very much for asking us. A few years since I've been here to this particular function, I can say by the turnout it's as popular as ever. And long may continue in this very place. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, I've been to 57 common ridings. The first was in 1960, <coughs> when the late Andy G. Morgan was cornered. The 57 was last year, when Simon Jack Twiddle carried the flag. Friday will be the 58th, which will be 58 out of 58, <laughs> providing I'm spared that long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm common riding. Great works that mean such a lot to people of Langham and the valleys that surround it. The Hughes Valley, Wabdale, the Taras Valley and Nestdale. We call it the common riding, but to be honest, we should call it the common riding. As, the, as it is the best common riding in the entire universe. <laughs> and, it, and as if Stephen Hawking thinks there are multiple parallel universes, it's the best common riding in the multiple parallel universes. <laughs> <laughs> 57 common readings, and I'd like to think I remember each and every year of them. I dare say that locked away in my brain somewhere is all the details of these 57 common readings. But there's sick a lot of rubbish in the heat nowadays, it's difficult sometimes to separate one common reading from another. However, I do have a lot of memories of common readings past, and I'd like to share some of these with you tonight. This hopefully will not only show you what uh, common reading means to me, also what it means to everybody here in this hall tonight and hopefully kindle some of your own memories of the common readings over the years. It doesn't no matter whether next week will be your second or your antecedent common writing. Memories play a big part in everybody's common writing. As I said earlier, the first common writing at the age of eight months was in 1960. I obviously didn't remember anything about the 1960 common reading, although I do count from photos that it was a wet year. I have a black and white photo, am I in the prom with Brother David in a cowboy hat and good cleese? <laughs> <laughs> this combination, a good cleese and a cowboy hat, was a sure sign it was the common reading. <laughs> cowboy hats been as much pet the common reading in them days as you're on black feast balloons with big painted lips and the feathers <laughs> that you could say regularly floating away into the sky on common riding day. <laughs> These balloons, of course, now no longer considered politically correct. <laughs> the 
following year 1968, again a plan for the Tui Forest Colour Story of Upcom and Reading. I was 20 months old in this day. The then Provost, John Woodward Hislop, had unfortunately died in the early hours of Common Reading morning that year. Councillor and later Provost Jimmy Grieve had to announce this to the crew before the flag was handed out to a shocked assembly. The photo of mine, and my grandfather Wally Cole and my father Alec, and my, of course, taken on that morning. My grandfather and father are smiling and beaming. I have a sullen and serious face. Obviously, the death of the Provost is <laughs> <laughs> is a colour slide of mine and my brother ready to go through the street. The sun is shining and I'm a good example, I am in a good example of a late 1950s budget chair thing. Like a box on wheels. <laughs> what grand wheels there were in that. <laughs> and made a grand care to you. <laughs> Me and David are dressed identically. Same granny he's little nitty pullovers, same shorts, same brun clock sandals, and same homemade common riding ribbon bow ties. The next year, 1962, is another belong to mine, but another photo comes to the rescue. This was taken in Che and Elder Cowan's back green behind Albert Place when we were on the way to side the flag handed out. It features a row of boys, Neil and Donald Cowan, Ian Duncan and Alan Robinson, sons of the late ex colonel Jim Robinson, David and myself. This time, most of them are in blazers, maroon school blazers, except for my who's in a fetching blue and white piped blazers. We <laughs> <laughs> do, do to hand me doing for the <laughs> Rob probably hadn't had a visit, and my mother named it in 1963 a photo called Future Cornets although David was the only in that actually got on to be a cop. Now, before you start getting worried and you think I'm not going to throw every day, <laughs> don't worry at all. I'm just doing a bit of scene setting here. However, I do need to mention 1963, because it's the first cover I could actually remember anything about. And I remember quite clearly signed Cormac George Elwood at the top of Lizzie's entry on foot wearing his sash, so it must have been the summer's fair day. The common in 1963 was a sunny warm day, and at the shows that year was getting on old-fashioned merry-go-rounds with horses and cockles that went up and down. And I met a man watching it with great wonder. I also remember vividly that I got a coffee apple at the shows just before we came here. As I walked above Clinton Gardens, the stick broke. <laughs> fell down into the gardens which were privately owned in the in them days, so the toffee apple was lost forever. <laughs> this was least upsetting and resulted in a lot of right hysterical greeting. <laughs> All the way along Long and Brig and doing Charles Street view as it was then, Thomas Telford Road. I can still hear my mother saying, stop that roaring or I'll give you something to roar on. <laughs> Years ago, 1967, in Cornet Holly Barnfather. And still main, main excitement for us boys playing in the park when we saw the For He's a Jolly Good Fellow sign being put up above, above Collins Goose on Carlyle Street. This wasn't a new or named For He's a Jolly Good Fellow sign currently over the door at Queen Fit. This was a board covered in belly cloth with the words painted on in black paint. <laughs> it was really, really exciting to us boys to sign this game. Common readings in the late 1960s meant, meant the end big thing to us nine and ten year olds. The shows. <laughs> they came on the Monday of the Common Reading Week and there was huge anticipation among the parents for what would come. The Speedway or the Waltzer. <laughs> that time the Liverpool came at the same time. I loved the Speedway and he the Waltzer, so the wait to say what came was unbearable. <laughs> if it was the Speedway, that was great. The Speedway we had motorbikes and animals to sit on, and full width chairs which the lassies and courting couples went on and lost money doing the back of them. <laughs> the shows then as now were run by the Taylor family, and I will remember young Sean Taylor, now the boss, and his brothers at the Kilgreen. 
the feather Mr. Taylor Sr. had a bad limp. And Mrs. Taylor, who did the hot dog stall, had a bad eye. <laughs> and they were good folk, and they didn't allow any nonsense during the common riding week. And Mrs. Taylor, eh, wanted to buy my rosette, but I would never sell it to her. <laughs> there was an old woman came with the shows called Mrs. Douglas, who ran one of the stalls. You'll maybe remember this. She had a mug full of straws, and you paid your money and chose a straw, and using a wire pin, you pushed it or, or rolled up a paper, and if it said prize, you would win the prize off the stall. I had my eye on a toy spider, and tried again and again to win it. I used up all my money without success. And then Mrs. Douglas said, what was I trying to win? And when I told her, she gave us the spider for being a trier. <laughs> That was in 1968, and the next day we took off for holidays in Oban, spider in town. <laughs> the 60s became the 70s, and in 1970, something happened that would change my common writings. Mm. Kenneth Hill decided he didn't want to carry the smart triangle anywhere in the flute band and offered it to me. I took it, and 46 years ago played for the first time in that great common writing institution, the flute band, and I've been there ever since. My early days in the band were very interesting. In them days, the elder statesmen of the band were John Popel Elliott, his brother Kit, and the college's great grandfather, the veritable John T. Jeffrey. Other long serving members were Bert Witherstein, Arthur Elliott, Ross Culver, and when he was back from Kenya, Alan Little. Well established then were his son Gordon, David Q. Lyman, Arthur Tolson. There were a few relative newcomers, David Paul, Neil Cowan, Jimmy Telford, and then in the early 70s, the last recruits turned up. Now pretty much the elder statesmen of the band themselves. Roddy Innes, Charlie Green, Cameron Davies and himself. It was in 1973 that Gordon Little was approached to say if Flaming Flute Band would play in an orange march in Glasgow for <laughs> This is true and it immediately started some of the flottest trying to play the sash and jump on <laughs> it. It was short-lived, lasted only about five minutes and was instantly dismissed by the elder statesman who said, you're no gone near. <laughs> and that was that. In them days, there was practices in the band hall we would, when we would march up and down and counter-march up and down the hall. This was not seen as satisfactory. So the next year, it was agreed to have a practice on the Copsha Road at the point yet, so we could march properly. The in factor hadn't been taken into account, however, the midges. <laughs> they were so bad that the practice was curtailed after just three tunes. These practices were later replaced in 1980 by the Foot Band Social, now 37 year old and still going strong. It was 1973 when I was promoted to the Big Triangle and then got flute in 1975. The term used in the flute band when a member mimes the tunes rather than plays them, it's known as a blind spy. I have to confess that 1975 to 1978 were my blind spy. <laughs> I could play some of the easier tunes like Rum and Try and Mayday and Under Pipers, but within a mile and the girl I left behind me, were mind to perfection. <laughs> I love being in the flute barn. The, flute, the fun and the banter is great, especially when they'll eat on the common riding morning when the rum and milk flies. Some members got to the hand trail, while others enjoy the have enjoyed the hospitality of John and Ailey to the full until they moved out last year. There's a new mind host at Hell Heat this year, Cheesy. However, I'm sure the hospitality will just be as good. Talking of hospitality, I will never forget the fit and booth year of 2000 in the end. We've just had under an hour and a half at Hill Heat, and in 2000 in the end, the hand trail, of course, was cancelled. The whole band therefore stayed at Hill Heat. Additional bottles of bottles of rum had been deposited by food band members. Many, many rum and milks were drunk that morning. Some having at least seven large ends before seven o'clock. <laughs> Ten past seven, the band left Hill Heat for back, gone back to the tune. The band didn't see much more than the 
Some members didn't say much of that common riding that year. Some even funnered on the bar three before half seven on the <laughs> I arrived here to Amora already gathering her brows. <laughs> Sat in the bairns were ready to go on through the street. I tried to get on an arc, but that was fine. It wasn't at all the worst for drink. This only lasted a few minutes, however, because when getting some in the fridge, I leaned on the freezer door and broke it off. <laughs> <laughs> the night seemed to see when two things happened. Firstly, at 17 and 3 quarters, I could just about pass for 18 and get served in the pubs. So drinks started to play its part in the common riding. But more importantly than that, the night seemed to see when saw us join the Castle Craig's Club. I didn't realise at the time how much I would enjoy being involved in that club. This year is obviously 40 years I've been there. I spent a lot of time on the committee and uh, was president in 1986 and it's still as enjoyable as when I started. Castle Craig's day and the dinner at night remain one of the best days of the common riding period. When the whole tune band squeezes into Prune Function Hall, along with 140 Castle Craigers, as can be seen to be believed. Runes of drink are bought by the bottle, not by the glass, and the singing and speaking is seated in hand. However, I was never born it. There was a time, mate, in my early twenties, when every Friday night with a few pints on board, I was definitely standing, and in the grey light of the Saturday morning, I definitely wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, the main problem with me was horses. Although I rode 10 Bentleys, 19 castle plays, numerous midweek riders and a few common ridings, I never enjoyed being, being on a horse. It wasn't the horses I was frightened at, it was the fun of <laughs> I fell off many times and very often in very public places. I fell off leaving Crumb in 1979, arriving at the Hen Wall in 1994, arriving at the Bentley in 1999. <laughs> and in 1980, we horse bolted on the top of the car field and passed every other road, including the corner that just happened to be David. <laughs> off and run away as far as they possibly could along the hill and the miles away. I used to get a horse off on the cavers by Henry. Henry was a small ex-flapper who soon a bit glamorous, but I have to tell you, Henry was now. His back was so bad that in order to put a saddle on, he had to pad him up with forward travel rugs. They were all different. Yes, I never made it as a cornet. When I look at the list of cornets, ex cornets, I'm amazed at how many ex cornets I'm related to. Obviously, there's my brother David in 1980, and then there's my mother's cousins Ian and David with me cornets in 1960 and 1965. There's my two great uncles, Alec McVeigh in 1929, and Tom Scott, the first corner after the First World War in 1919. There's my granny's cousin's son, Ronnie Hudson. 1966, of course, with my nephew Jamie, who's left, still left hand man. Then there's my mother's mother's cousin's son, John Young, <laughs> my mother's mother's cousin's grandson, Billy Young, <laughs> my granny's cousin's son's daughter's son, <laughs> Andrew Elliott in 2004. <laughs> Then there's my mother's favourite. <laughs> Second cousin's sister's great grandson, Big Dave McVeigh, who's in 96, just another ex cornet relative. But what was really surprising was when I was looking into this is that Moon Man, Neil Armstrong's great granny's second cousin's brother, and my great grandfather's brother's cousin's nephew, <laughs> had no relation but <laughs> This was Harry's last year as official spade bearer, and being allowed to carry the spade aloft at the front of the procession was a great affair to me. Neil Stevenson made a video of that common riding when Roger was cornered in 1982. As the emblems move off on the Kirkwine, the strains of Crazy Lee, 
Harry, carrying the spade, can be seen turning to his son James in mind and saying something. What Harry actually said, and this is true, was, the had to be bricks that are coming down. <laughs> Guns back 35 years. I've managed to carry the speed ever since, even if it was just a quick go as I had the bearings in tow, and that was thanks to Speed Carrier David Reed. In 2003, the new Speed Carrier Gordon asked me to be one of his team of five speed bearers who walk on the hill to the Castle Craigs, up to the monument, and down to White Wall on the common ride in the morning to help Gordon with his duties. Still, it's still a great honour to do this. Even though now I make I only gone to the gate on White and shut the gate and nipped in the burning breeze to meet the speed at White Wall. My eyes know me what they were. The house is full of photos of the speed being carried in a multitude of different common writing ties and colours. Even the urge to go and duke it in the use last year <laughs> hasn't it dampened my enthusiasm. <laughs> Then there was the common riding of 1985. That incredible day of weather that tested the common riding with Cornet Kenny Donaldson and the people of Langham who were limit that did the find them wanting. It made that common riding very memorable. Just a few memories of that day. The rumble of thunder as the food barn left Hill Heat. The flash and crack of thunder as the procession went over the Langham Brig on the way to the square pump. The rain started, two horses slipped and fell at the foot of the cut line right beside where I was standing. The heavens opening with thunder and lightning as the procession moved away for the tune fit, and walking up the cut line we had torn the water covered in your shoes, but it didn't stop the common riding. The rapidly rising river used, no ponies allowed to cross the water, but speed carrier David Reed crossed holding desperately the great Cubbins saddle girth. Soaked to the skin and gay near washed away. A lightning strike just at the ground behind the grandstand. It was an incredible day. Many, many sports jackets were ruined that day, and very few common riding ties from 1985 survived the soaking. My great uncle Tom, who was in his 90s in 1985, says it was the wettest day in London he could ever remember. There have been 257 common ridings in an unbroken line. War, disease, and the weather have failed to stop this great event. Today there's a new film being released about Dunkirk, and it reminded me of the story of the two Longham men who were evacuated from Dunkirk and were coming over on a white boat, and obviously they were a bit downcast, and the end of them says, Ken, what's going to happen now? And the other one says, I know, I didn't know. He says, well, Hitler's got to come across the channel, he's going to march up to London, he's going to take over London and the government, and then he's going to march up to York, and he's going to take over York, and then he'll march up to Carroll, and they'll take all the cities between York and Carroll, and when he's in Carroll, he's going to come across the border, and he's going to take over Longham, and he'll stop the common riding. Another one says, aye, well, that's when the war will really stand. <laughs> 25 years ago, Cormac Stephen Ray, I was, at, I was at EWM at Long Toon in them days, and I wasn't allowed to get the day off for me, so I had to make some compromises that year. However, I managed as much as I could. I flew barn at 5 o'clock, down to Long Toon to open up at 6, back to the beach up with the flu barn, team, Wheel 18 month old Jack pull up on the buggy, side the flags handed out to Cormac Ray, Side the horses up the hill, gone with the heather visms, nip away to have a go with the speed, not a drop of alcohol all morning. Corrin's cheese, then drive back to Longton to shut up and back into Langham for two o'clock. Absolutely pissed in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> the sleep, and then up to the field to the dance, and then to say, Mother Ray, hand back the flag. It was an interesting day, but never again. <laughs> Although everybody here tonight really appreciates and understands the common riding, I was looking forward to Fredericks Friday immensely. Not everybody that arrives in Langham on the common riding day appreciates what a great and important event the common riding is. Let me give you an example, and this is again absolutely true. Many years ago, Wagon came to EWM, where was then in Langham. 
had a load of cartons and had come on the last Friday in July on spec, hoping that somebody would tip them. They obviously found the way it was locked and deserted. But I felt they'd better leave a note under the door just to show that he'd been there in case his bosses checked up on him. I wrote the note and put it under the warehouse door. I found it on the Monday morning, and this is exactly what it said. Reason for non-delivery. Village closed for fate. <laughs> <laughs> Fair ignorant bastard. <laughs> <laughs> to refer to one of the great community festivals in Britain, near the world, as a fate is definitely not on. But it is a great community celebration, and everybody from the youngest bairn to the oldest resident is able to take part in the common reading just as they want. I'm so proud of what we have in Langham and what we will celebrate again on Friday. You can be a participator or just stand back and watch. You can be a horseman or you can walk the common riding. You can walk with the emblems behind the tune band or with the bearings with the heather visible behind the pipe band. You can stay sober or you can take a lot of drink and still enjoy every minute. You can run in races or watch dancing or horse racing or just sit in your garden and enjoy the atmosphere. We have something special in Langham, and in an ever-changing world, and with youngsters these days for traders not interested in much, it is gratifying to see how involved the youngsters of Langham and the Toon are in the common riding, and how they help keep the traditions going year after year. So there you have it, a journey through 57 common ridings. All the way from Cornet Andy Morgan, when men younger than I am wore a fried piece suit every day, flat caps and gabardine rain boots, a black and white TV if you had been at three channels, and tin bars were very much still in use, where it was anywhere. Yes, all the way from then to today, mobile phones, social media, flat screen tellies, Xboxes, Xboxes and iPods. But the end thing stays the same, and it's the common right in itself. The Lalamite of 1960 would feel quite at home, I'm sure, with the common riding of 2017, compared that is for the price of the drink. <laughs> when I was a bairn, we always stood as a family, waiting on the flag being handed out, outside the co-op, the SWCS store run by Jimmy Kettle. <laughs> the mother and father stood there every year until the weather there at all. It's not only about maintaining traditions, it's a lot of things that make it common riding. And many people here can relate to being at the same place at the same time on common riding day. It just feels natural. So here's the common riding of 2017. I, along with the Athario, will wish Cornet Stewart, Les, Gillian and Shona, and all the family a great day on Friday. And may the sun shine from dawn to dusk. We stand on the threshold of another marvellous chapter in the history of the Muckleton. So much has already happened on the run-up to Friday. Riders have been rowed, ties have been bumped, the flute bands had its social, drinks have been drunk, the morning the convert will gone to the, up to cut wine and right to the castle craigs. <coughs> Many young and not so young will enjoy a few libations in the hay shed at Cronky. On Sunday I will be cut, read the lesson, the Masons will parade at night, then the bonnet testing will be held, drinks will be drunk, hairdos arranged, Goofy's planned, pussy's painted, gazebo's hunted out, drinks drunk, and then the concert, the barns, the summer's fair night, the floating tune and pipe barns out, and we've still got the big day itself. I can't wait. To everybody here, especially the cornet and his family, have a grand common riding and enjoy yourself thoroughly. And you please be upstanding and take the to the common riding.
to our beloved Common Rain. I made it very clear before this, before we started, that this was a night of I means. That we would be sticking rigidly to protocols that have been laid down for thousands of years and that there will be absolutely no deviation from this. Well, it's the Chairman's priority to change his mind, so I will. And introduce a new item into the court next night. Still, you know. That I first heard in the top ten at Hoyt this year. To make his debut as an entertainer tonight, can I call upon Stuart Fletcher to recite the poem he wrote a number of years ago which sims up so well his feelings about Lanham's great day, Stuart. Club, 
and first recorded by the great local baritone John Jock Heaslip. It is, of course, Bonnie Langham, and when it comes to the last verse, Glenn has asked us all to get Lally. Glenn. <laughs> But come the day, every box will have been ticked 
and every possible eventuality will have been covered. And the credit for this must surely go to that great bunch of sober, well sometimes, <laughs> and true men that make up the Common Riding Committee. Leading them is a true, true champion of the Common Riding and a great friend of mine, and I'm delighted to ask him to reply to Kenneth's excellent toast now. Ladies and gentlemen, ex Cornish Roger Maxwell. accelerates as the years pass. Enjoy every minute, Cornet, as it doesn't last long. As the members organise the common line, it's easy to get tied up with background details, which unfortunately we have to deal with. But let me assure everybody that we organise the common line with the wishes of the people of London very much to the front of our minds, people like yourselves. Maintaining the great traditions we have is number one on our list of priorities. Each year, Something unexpected happens. Something from left field, a punch below the belt. This year, as Billy says, it was the, the cut wide war. When I heard the work was about to commence five weeks before the Castle Craig's ride up with hardly sleep, the people involved didn't even know about tomorrow's riding, nor the practice moments. We talk about lack of communication. However, sense has prevailed, and the cut wide is clear and ready for tomorrow and next week. Sleepless nights were nothing. I've been up quite a hill a lot more often in the last few months with a dog in my hand. I've been to places on the hill for the first time, and some of the views along them, especially at this time of year, with everything in full bloom, have to be seen to be believed. There can surely be no bit nicer. White Hill was there long before we came along, and it'll be there long after we have left. You could hardly argue long and hard about the grazing rights, the ownership of the ground. We are the ones who look onto that hill 12 months of the year, the ones who walk there every day, and the ones who send their corner onto their slopes to say, if our merchies there be clear, it's our hill, ladies and gentlemen, and it always will be. Kenneth, I love your sense of humour. Some great memories of countless common writings. You're a great common writing boy. I have very fond memories of you following the right and left who brought the race up the year I was coming, having counted my vote. You were just as thrilled as I was. That was a fabulous walk through the last 57 common ratings. Cornet, but I wish you the very best of luck for the coming week, and especially Friday. You've been a credit to the town so far, and everything, everyone is totally behind you. Kenneth, thank you very much for your excellent post. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the way you see it. Thank you. David Poole. David first rode the Common in 1975 and achieved his life's ambition when he was elected Cornet in 1980. Since then he has played with every part that can be played in Lannan's Great Dane. He's been the president of the Castle Craig's Club, the Castle Craig's Fair Crier, has sung and organised the Common Riding Concert, has cha chaired the Barra Testing on a number of occasions and has played in the foot band for 48 years. But is now a fixed suture. One of the hallowed few who walk with a barley banner on a common writing game. He's also a much valued member of the same old, same old. That glittering array of highly talented performers who are enticed to here every year by the Lord of Free Drink to entertain me all. Cerebral. The first song David is going to sing is one that he has made very much his own. First played at the common writing with the Toon Band in 1878. To lament the passing of Willie Arn, honest man, it is of course the floors of the forest. Ladies and gentlemen, excellent David Poole. Life's 
I've got something here you could crawl across on. <laughs> and a voice from the bottom bunk says, I how the hell is she gonna get far? <laughs> Played immediately after the corner receives the flag, and after the double beat to the big drum, it replaced Scots with hay sometime after 1882. <laughs> it is, of course, Oa the Airs. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Milligan and Oa the Airs. Young and not so young new members 
along with Yinner Tweal stagers thrown into the mix for support. In the pipe section we have Kira Norden, Paul Foster, Melissa Park and Margaret Norden, along with Pipe Sergeant Nigel Bell and Pipe Major Craig Irving. And in the drum section we have Kian Norden, Callum Jeffrey, Liana Steele and Ruby Lam, along with the one and only Leonard Bell, <laughs> V.E.M. <laughs> Henderson on the big drum. So sit back and hard tight as they set the heather alight and the Scottish blood coursing through your veins with a selection of traditional pipe music. Please give a rousing welcome to the new members of the Borough of Langham Pipe Band and others.
Empty your tongue but powder your nose. We will reconvene in exactly 10 minutes, so be there or be square. Thank you very much. Cheers and singing, we are here 
Sunday school Christmas parties in the Isle Mission Hall. And you were made to sit in neat rows on the flare, awaiting the imminent arrival of Santa Claus. Many's the time the bricks were pished with excitement. <laughs> As those few seconds turned into hours and the anticipation became unbearable. Well, I hadn't quite pushed the bricks yet, but the anticipation is again mounting and I'm beginning to shake uncontrollably and drool in the mood as we come dead close to hear the highlights of the night. There are millions of other bands throughout the world, but to the true Langamite, Neen could possibly hide a carnal tradition. Hang on to your seats again, throw open your souls and prepare to experience another communal orgasm of pride and delight. When I give you the Langham Tun Bond.
after all year is almost upon us again. So you see the step to rise and the late great Dave McVitie's festering pluck is about to erupt again in all its septic glory. It would be wrong of mine not to mention that there's a man at the centre of the band tonight who has played at the common riding incredibly for the last 65 consecutive years. But Ian Hudson was nine years old when he joined the band as a drummer to follow in the footsteps of his late father, Buddle. But all good things must inevitably come to an end. However, Ian is not the last Hudson to play the big drum in the Toon Band, far from it because he is passing on his drumsticks to his grandson Ross, who will perpetuate the very long association that the Hotsons have had with it. So we congratulate them both. And both of them. <laughs> I wonder if Glenn might entertain us with another song. And the song he has chosen to sing this time is the Bar Breen, or On the Banks of Allan Water. Glenn. Election when the tension was electric. 
But when Simon and Jamie finally arrived, the atmosphere changed immediately to Yenishir euphoria, and I could see how much it meant to Ross that he screamed and achieved his lifelong ambition. He assures us that he's not going to speak long, too long, as he was caught recently speeding day in a tunnel in the bypass of <laughs> So I believe him. Ladies and gentlemen, propose the toast to Ward Barnett, Ross Ray.
Stewart currently owns a 1975 Triumph Toledo, or Toby as it's known to him, in Inca Yala. Luckily to Stuart, I couldn't dig up any embarrassing stories about his time as a classic car enthusiast. I thought I better take the piss of his driving because I'm not the best to drive on. <laughs> <laughs> One passion I touched on briefly before was Stuart's love for the common riding. He followed Conrad Simon Richardson in 2008, joined the Castle Craigs Club that year. Since then he has not missed a year. On the 12th of May this year, his lifelong dream became reality, being elected Land Cornet 2017. Receiving 282 votes for the Tom Soka Lager. I was lucky enough to be in the house when you found out the good news. As we waited in the living room, we had a mighty cheer come through, the, through from the kitchen. It could only mean one or two things. Either you've been elected, or it's the happiest anyone had ever been to see Ross Raven walk through their front door and find out. Perfectly, representing the town at other border communes and festivals. Now, as we charge head first into every land of favourite week of the year, I want to take this opportunity to wish yourself, Father Les, Mother Julian, Sister Shona, and the rest of the family the very best for the coming week. Cherish every moment. Also, semi Jubilee Ray, the Jubilee Barn Father, who the memories of 25 and 50 years from Flooding Barn on that last Friday in July. And finally, I ask you all to be upstanding and drink your toes to a very good friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ray picks it up and moves it 60 meters. <laughs> and then I hear a cry from the touchline. What the fuck did he kick? <laughs>
Time is on the wane, as the Glasgow man said when he dropped the grandfather clock in the bairn's head. <laughs> so in time on of fashion, can I ask Stephen to entertain us again We what else but Sorby Haas Road End or Scotland yet? Sings all my childhood that dear. 